Hi guys, welcome to another episode of my channel and in this episode I'm going to be talking about how I got my first on-campus job as an international student in the United States. Now this is a collaborative video between myself and Abroad High, also known as Aladi Ako. If you've not seen our own version of the video, you can check the description box below because I'm going to be linking to our own video in the description box. You can go ahead to our channel, check our story out and learn from it as well. So um. Now, the main goal of this video is not to scare you, it's not to tell you how difficult or how easy it is to find a balance in the United States. It's just to show you that, um, it's just to show you how the whole thing works, right, from A to Z. And that's exactly what I will be doing in this video. If you're not subscribed to my channel, do not forget to do so by clicking on the subscribe button below. Do not forget to give the video a thumbs up if you like it. Do not forget to drop a comment, especially if you have a question. Hmm. See, when it comes to coming to America, people like to paint the picture that it is easy. In fact, the paint is so simple to the extent that hmm, my brother, my sister, if you are watching, whatever you've heard before you come to, but whatever you've heard, like if people say it's easy, it's not difficult. I would not discourage you. I survived. Anybody can survive. But it is not as easy as most people tell you that it is. Fact. So, for you to understand my story very well, I'm going to give you like a backstory a little bit so that you understand where I'm coming from and how the whole thing worked out for me, okay? So, I've heard different stories that once you get to the US, on-campus jobs are easy to get. They pay you $20 per hour. Um, they pay you they pay you some money per hour, not twenty dollars per hour. Obviously, they pay you like ten dollars or fifteen dollars per hour. You work for uh, you work for twenty hours per week. You pay rent with that money. You eat. You live large. It's a lie. Let's just pause it there. Now, my story is a bit different from most people because when people are coming for either like a PhD or master's degree, usually they come with funding, which means either full funding or partial funding they come with some sort of funding which means it's going to reduce their cost of living to a reasonable extent and then um they have to like figure out most of the time the funding might come with a stipend or um some form of money that's going to make life easier for them my story is different because when i got my admission offer i did not get any funding with it right so i had anticipated i was going to get like some sort of tuition waiver some sort of um, stipend even if it's not much i had anticipated i was going to get some sort of money to make the transition very very easy for me but that wasn't the case okay i got the admission offer i did not get any funding offer so if you've not seen my video about how i got full funding for my master's degree program i'm going to paste it like i'm going to put the link not paste i'm going to put the link somewhere here or there so that you can follow up with that story but the summary from that video was that I was able to push my school. I don't know why that ice cream bus is making that noise. It's so annoying. <sighs> That's because spring is here. Summer is almost here. So the weather is not that cold again. Anyway, so why is it making noise? Yeah, so the story is that I was able to talk my department or I got lucky. I was able to get out of state tuition waiver which means I was asked to pay what citizens are paying not what international students are paying that doesn't automatically take away the cost what it does is it reduces it to about it was supposed to be like 17,000 or there about just tuition and fee per semester so it reduced my money from 17,000 plus to about I think like six thousand dollars right that's how much i had to pay from my own pocket right so i paid that i had no promise of job on campus actually i had a promise of job on campus the promise was that i'll be in school like i'll cater for my own expenses for my first semester and then my department will step in and give me a graduate teaching assistant or graduate teaching assistant position in the second semester which means i wouldn't get tuition waiver i wouldn't get full tuition waiver i wouldn't get stipend until my second semester right that was the offer i was working with i was comfortable with that to some extent right so i paid my tuition before leaving nigeria and i had a little amount of money okay because i know that the first semester was going to last for like four months or there about four five months so my plan was that if i can raise money for the first two or three months 
because I've heard people talk about how easy it is to get job on campus, right? So my goal was that I will have money for the first three months. When I can cater for the first three months, I will then get a job on campus the moment I get to the United States. Then when I get a job, I wouldn't have to spend all my money because the job is going to be paying me so much money. I will make money and I will not have to spend all my money. Right. I was wrong before God. I was wrong. So I got to the United States. I had money with me, right? So my first few, my first one month was not bad. I paid my rent, I did like normal stuff, get some basic stuff for myself. Then it dawned on me my second month that I had incurred some expenses that I did not plan for when I was living in Nigeria, when I was living in Nigeria, which means I had spent a bit of my third month budget in my second month, right? So I need to find a job before the end of the second month. Take note that the moment I got to school, I started searching for jobs. So my school has this um handshake portal where they list different kind of on-campus jobs where people talk where you just send your CV and apply for jobs and then they call you for interview. So I started applying even before I left Nigeria, right? So but most of them will say you have to be on campus for interview, you have to do this, you have to do that. Was, and they don't get any job before leaving Nigeria, okay? So when I go to the United States, I started applying for jobs, right? Because I'm here now, whatever your interview is, I'm going to be there. So I started applying for jobs, no response, nothing, zilch, zero, no interview offer, no invite, on campus job, nothing, zero. One month is gone. Remember, I had just three months for job with me, so I was literally like going broke at this point in time. I was seeing my brokenness ahead, okay? It's funny now, but it wasn't funny. So, um, I kept on applying. Then, I told my roommate, my roommate is in the PhD program, so he has been here for like three or four years, so three years, yeah. So, I told him that, bro, I'm about to go broke. Cool. Then, he advised me to keep on searching for jobs, that if worse comes to worst, there are some things that I can do to get some kind of jobs and all of that but the beauty of having an on-campus job is that when you have an on-campus job number one you're authorized to have an on-campus job definitely so when you have an on-campus job the job would be structured in such a way that it fits into your school schedule right but if you're working off campus probably not authorized or whatever and stuff like that if your employer will not care if you're a student or not. They just want to get the job done. So on-campus job is really important for me at this point in time because it's my first semester. It's my first time outside of the country. Everything looks so strange to me. So I need to be in a, an environment that will be very comfortable, right? So I started, I kept on applying. So I, every single day I'll visit my school website where they list on-campus job. I'll submit applications, send in my CV, nothing. Oh, sorry, the position has been filled. <sighs> I was a bad going broke. So, as luck will have it, I got my first interview. It's an administrative job. I went there. I wore my best shirts, bro. I was. I wore my best shirts. I did everything. I spoke with my fake American accent. So I was like, yeah. <laughs> I tried my best to enunciate the more to sound more American, right? I don't want them to know that I'm fresh off the boat. So I got there and um, she interviewed me. And then two weeks later, she was like, oh, sorry. She got somebody for the job, but she needed two assistants that if the opportunity for the second person opened up, she's going to reach out to me. And that was it. She never reached out to me. I never heard back from her. In my mind, I'm like, I thought we were vibing. I mean, I thought I was your guy, but no, I wasn't. She had her eyes on another person. Anyway, long story short, I did not get the job. Then I was about giving up. Thankfully for somebody like um thankfully for my friend in Nigeria, it's more like an uncle friend <laughs> relationship. Yeah. He was the one that was sending me money. He sent me like I think he sent about six hundred dollars to me. Six hundred dollars if I'm not extravagant, it's gonna cover for my expenses for one more month, right? Because I was on in a shoestring budget. So as long as I can feed myself and pay my rent, I was good. So um, it sent me money, so I had like a buffer for the next month. And I kept on searching. That was like two months into my arrival in America. Then I saw a, a friend sent me a link. Apparently, 
the link was shared in a um a department group it wasn't really popular like that like the job offer wasn't really popular it was it has to do with like graduate research assistant position with um university research service and administration so basically it's like um a graduate job where you do like um research stuff like that it has a lot to do with science it has a lot to do with administrative skills and i have a cv that is very perfect for that because i used to work with the um um, with the state um, public health before leaving Nigeria, like I did my NYSC in the state public health before leaving Nigeria, so I kind of like look like a perfect person for that. And then they asked that we send SOP and all of that, bro. I lifted my SOP for my admission, very detailed SOP. I'm sure a lot of people would not have that SOP for a job application, so I used that SOP to apply for the job. Everything looks well, and then it was going to take them one month to review the application. So, long story short. I think about three or four weeks I heard back from them and they were like, um, I should come in for an interview. Bro, this was my lifeline. If I did not get that job at that particular point in time, oh boy, I was already thinking about flipping burgers. My friend, my friend in the US can tell you this. If they are seeing this video, they will probably laugh out loud because um, usually like we have a meeting like on phone on Sundays and I was always joking that if I don't get a job soon enough, I'll start flipping burger by the roadside in America. It was a joke, but my future was starting to look like that, okay? So, long story short, I went for the interview, I nailed it by God's grace. I did so well, the lady told me that, my supervisor to be told me that you're actually our first candidate for this job because we're really impressed when we saw your SOP, we're really impressed when we saw your CV, and then she was so nice. She gave me a tour of the office, the entire space. And then somebody told me that if you go for an interview and they give you a tour of the office, there are like 90% chance that you're getting the job. So I was like, yeah, fine. So she said she's gonna reach out to me before the end of the week to tell me if I get the job or not. I was so anxious, I mailed out the lady that, what's up, did I get the job? She was like, she's trying to get the paperwork done with their business manager. So that was how I got my first job, right? So it wasn't even through the application portal for the undergrad, for the on-campus employment. It was through a friend that sent the link to me, stuff like that. So the whole point of this video is that you would always figure it out. Like at some point, you always figure it out. It's, stuff is gonna work out um, at some point, one way or the other. That's how life works. But do not assume that it's gonna be easy because it wasn't easy. I can tell the story and just and laugh about it now, but it's a whole different thing when you um, literally see that you're running out of money and like, and this is America, it's not like you pay your rent for one year, you pay your rent every month. You can literally see that you're about to become homeless. Right. So that was my story. I got my first job, um, first on campus job um, as an international student in the United States. And um, I think it helped that I had some amount of money with me because I cannot imagine coming to the US with something that would last me for one month and I couldn't get a job for like two months, right? That would have been very crazy. But the good thing is that I earned the salary because it's a student job, right? So the money they were supposed to pay me when I wasn't working, I got the money. Like they split the money for that semester over the entire month that I worked. So I think I got about extra like money. It was really nice. Even though I was supposed to get a tuition waiver, I did not get a tuition waiver because I got the job late in the semester. Which would have been nicer if I got the tuition waiver in the sense that they would have refunded my $6,000 that I paid in Nigeria before coming to the US. So, that's my story. Lesson you should learn is that number one, it's not going to be as easy as people have portrayed it to you. So, you have to be, you have to be ready for that. You have to gear up for that, right? It's not like jobs are hanging out everywhere waiting for you to come to America. No, even Americans are also searching for on-campus jobs, right? So the competition is crazy. Remember, people are coming from Asia, people are coming from Africa, people are coming from South America, people are coming from Europe, international students as well, right? The second thing is that make sure your CV is on point. Check the US format to make sure that everything is on point. I'm going to link my video on how I got my first internship somewhere here or there, there somewhere, anyway. So, so that you see, I talked about preparing your CV and cover letter and reaching out to people in that video as well. So, uh, those are the two main things. And also, I don't know, faith works for me, right? So, I don't know, you might want to have faith that might help you a lot. 
So um, that's all I have for you in this video. If you've not subscribed to the channel, do so by clicking on the subscribe button below. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to drop a comment. And most importantly, hmm, don't forget to go to our Broad Eye channel to see our own version of how she got a job, an on-campus job as an international student in the US. So uh, that's all I have for you, for you in today's video. And I'll see you in the next one. Ha.